on the little hand button next to your there you go. Thank you, Janet. I appreciate that. And David. All right. And Julie, you can all hear me. Wonderful. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I'm really excited about this uh, particular webinar because it's really kind of the beginning of our um, venture into inventory and inventory control. Over the next several weeks, we're going to um, have a, uh, different uh, webinars that uh, are going to be a kind of a continuation part one, part two, part three type of series. And this is just the first one that's kind of a little bit different because we talk about some of the inventory reporting that can help you manage your uh, inventory and keep track of what's going on with your inventory. And some of these things aren't real obvious. So uh, we're going to go ahead and start the, the broadcast. And uh, Chad, if you want to go ahead and click on the record button, we can get started. All right, we should be good to go. So my name is Charles sure. Owen. All right, thanks, Chad. My name is Charles Owen. Uh, my role here at Paladin is to I manage business alliances, and I get uh, roped into doing demos and webinars, and I really enjoy it. So it's not a it's it's uh, very welcome. Um, I want to uh, thank you all for coming today and attending this webinar. I'll try to make it as painless as possible, and try to make it quick and and. Uh, give you some good information here that you'll be able to take away uh, some good things. So today's topic is about unlocking the secrets of inventory reports and controls, part of our uh, Excellence in Coaching webinar series. And um, this 30-minute presentation or less will, uh, will kind of show you uh, the, some of the different reports that we can look at to see how we're tracking in inventory. And some of these are obvious, some aren't so obvious, so hopefully you'll learn some tricks in this to give you uh, uh, a good a good walk away. All right, so um, I'm being assisted by Chad. Chad will get a list of all of the questions. If you have questions, just type them in your screen, and Chad uh, can respond, or we can open this up at the end. Right now, everybody's in mute mode. We can change that, though. Um, so at the end of the presentation, we can unlock those, those mutes. If you have a question, just raise your hand or something, and I can open it up so you can ask a question. Or if you feel more comfortable typing it in, that's fine as well. So if you miss uh, the, any of our past presentations, or if you have to leave early on this one and you want to see the, the balance of the presentation, you can always go to uh, paladinpointofsale.com slash webinars. It will be at the last screen as well, so you'll be able to see that. So let's go ahead and, and get started here. All right, so taking you to the first screen slide here. So this is the agenda. So the first thing I'm going to do is go through a couple of slides, and then we're going to actually bring up the Paladin application. Part of the, um, you know, what we're trying to accomplish today, the goal is to give you tighter inventory control. And we're going to talk about methods for achieving that, the advantages of achieving that, and then some insight into new proactive tools that you can use in Paladin that all of you should have on this day. We'll talk about that more towards the end of the presentation. And then we'll go into the Paladin point of sale demonstration. Those uh, are the agenda items for today. And uh, so what are the, uh, the goals of, you know, what are our goals? So our goals are uh, tighten up our largest investment, as you know, uh, your inventory control in particularly in hardware and lumber, lumber and building material stores. In pharmacies, it can be if you've got a large front uh, um, over-the-counter item area. Uh, so we'll we'll talk about how to tighten that up and uh, some of the advantages that we can achieve from that. We're also uh, going to look at uh, how we prevent overstocking. So there are really two issues that. I think everybody's aware of with inventory control. One is, you know, we're running out of product. And the other is, we're ordering too much product. And we try to bring that into uh, into balance, and it's a fine balance between those two. And the Paladin system was really designed to help you accomplish that. And it will we'll discuss what the advantages are of that. But I'm sure you all know. And then uh, we're going to use some of Paladin's reporting to see and act on the health of your inventory. So those are kind of uh, today's goals. So methods for better inventory management. 
Uh, of course, you'll want to review your stock. That should be very habitual. You'll want to manage and, and, and do the reviewing of your stock. So we recommend that you take the RF gun, you walk a section of your store every day, four-foot section, whatever it might be, have the cashiers do it. But there's a reason you're doing that, because if you don't review your stock, who will? Uh, you got to make sure that the, the right price is on there, the stickers on there, there's not other, other items on the peg or on the shelf. And while you're doing that, obviously, you're going to be collecting real-time counts, or what we call cycle counts. It's just part of running a retail business and managing your stock, as you know. All right. Another method is, obviously, and the, one of the most obvious, which not everybody's doing, is use Paladin's suggested ordering. By using the suggested ordering, and just to review what the advantages of that and why that's important is, and why it's important in Paladin in particular, is because we don't necessarily force you to put in a minimum, you know, a reorder point and a maximum. Paladin will look at the uh, pattern of sales and it will suggest to you a particular uh, order amount based on several factors. How, how many you have on hand, how many you've sold in the last week, last month, last year, um, you know, how many you have on order, uh, multiple aspects of, of your inventory. In Paladin, by using suggested ordering, it's the magic that makes you balance out that running out of product and overstocking. So it's very, very important to use suggested ordering. How do you get into that? Well, we'll have a, a full webinar on that, but contact your customer service representatives. They will help uh, walk you through the process and procedures. It's not as difficult as you think to get moved over from a walk in the aisle, shoot for out, to going and using Paladin suggested ordering. Part of that process, though, is doing the cycle counts because you have to have, have good cycle counts or good stock on hand counts to accomplish that. All right. Other methods for better inventory management, you know, we, ha we need to assess and measure where things are at. And this is where we get into some of the, the reports that help us uh, measure how we're tracking to inventory. One of those, most obvious one, is negative stock on hand report. If you come in every day and run the negative stock on hand report, That'll really help you tighten up where you're at. So if you don't haven't counted a section for a while, and you're not necessarily, um, you know, receiving it properly or whatever it might be, you, your stocks could be way out of whack. Your stock on hand amounts, particularly, and you're going to find some things like coupons and um, and other uh, other uh, dump dummy SKUs or dump SKUs or whatever you want to refer to them as that are going to have stock on hand at a negative, and that's okay, all right? But that's a good report. The next one, one of my favorite reports in our system is inventory count list report. That's an inventory report that puts out to an Excel spreadsheet very, um, you know, imp very good information that you'll want to see. It has, uh, you've got things like uh, last six weeks of sales, last um, year of sales, and uh, your margins, what your margins look like, your costs, your uh, real t retail prices. And because it's in an Excel spreadsheet, it's a very nice medium for you to slice and dice and sort that file any way that you uh, choose in order to look at the results you want to see. For example, some of the results that you might want to see are, what are my top 10 sellers? Well, that's easy. Just generate an inventory count list for your whole store sort it by what you sold in the last year, highest at the top, and it's going to show you what has sold, you know, the top 10 that have sold. And then you can look at the top 20, the top 100, and uh, see very quickly and easily what's selling in your store and what isn't. Another really cool thing about that is you can sort the margin. So you can see if your margins are higher or lower in the negative. In some cases, they may be. So we'll look at that, and we'll run that report to show you that as a sample. Slow Movers Report, another great report that will uh, generate out to an Excel spreadsheet or a PDF, whatever you prefer. The formats are very different. I prefer the Excel because I like to be able to interact with the data. But the Slow, slow Movers Report will kind of identify all those items that just aren't turning. And you need to find that out and you need to know that. The next one is Shrinkage Report. So as you're conducting your routine cycle counts and reviewing your stock as you're walking part of the store every day, just make that habitual, 
you'll be able to see what's leaving the shelf without going through the point of sale system. It could be theft, could be it's just it's misplaced, could be a customer picked it up, moved it to another spot in the store and you haven't quite found it yet. Uh, there could be multiple issues, but shrinkage reports are very important. And the next one, which is an obvious one, is inventory valuation report. That's a cool one. And all these reports, by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you an example here, but I have a database that's, that's fairly large, you know, up uh, close to four gigabytes of, of data. And when I run these reports, it takes seconds. In, in the case of an inventory valuation report, it goes through 41,000 items in probably a, you know, a three or four second period, which is really cool. Another report that I haven't put on here that shows you more of a, a tighter time frame is, is the revenue report. So you can run the revenue report on a daily basis or weekly basis or even run it for any time period that you want and you can check out and see how you're tracking to your inventory, how you're tracking with your margins. Okay. Enough said there. So the advantages of better inventory management, I think this one's pretty obvious. The advantage is, um, is it's going to put more money in your pocket. So how do we accomplish that? Well, if you're running suggested ordering, you're running these reports, and you're tracking and, and managing and reviewing your inventory, you will bring that balance of overstock and outs um, more in line. So you're going to be pulling items off your shelf. Your orders might even be smaller, depending on how many days out that you're looking to stock your, your store. So by, by limiting the depth of product and bringing it more in line with the demand that's coming in from your sales, because we have pattern recognition technology that looks at the pattern of sales, it will help reduce your overstock. And we have testimony after testimony after testimony of, of you, our, our customers, who have been able to you know, bring as much as, you know, pull as much as 100 grand out of your, out of your overstocked inventory in about a 12 to 13 month period. It also could, as I mentioned, could reduce your orders because now it's just doing just-in-time ordering. It's ordering just enough for the demand but no more. What's that do on the flip side? Well, it reduces the outs. So now you have less outs. Your customers will be not leaving your store. So right now, if you've got out, out products and your customer comes in, they've got a list of 20 items, they might go to that shelf and go, oh, geez, they're out. I got to make the 30 mile drive anyway. I might as well just jump in the car and leave and I'll just leave the cart here. Happens all the time. It's frustrating for both the merchant as well as the consumer because we want the products there. So if you're able to fill those holes and have ordering that looks at the pattern of sales and is able to uh, predict and make a better prediction as to what needs to be on the shelf, you may in fact reduce your, your outs significantly using Paladin if you're, if you're using suggested ordering. That's a good thing because the cr customers will end up buying that product as well as all the other products on their list and they'll come into your store more often because they can depend that you're going to have that product. And um, by all that money that's coming in from uh, from uh, reducing your overstock, you can take that money and and buy more breadth of products. So you don't necessarily want to have uh, so much depth that you've got overstock. Pardon me, but you certainly want to add more um, breadth of product and uh, adding new lines and and things of that nature, so that you will appeal to a broader customer base. All of that's going to generate increased profit. This is just this is our story. I mean, this is the same thing we preach all the time. You use the system the way it was designed with suggested ordering, you will be profitable, you will make more money. By running some of these reports, it'll help you keep an eye on your invoice losses. And that's important because um, obviously you're not in business to give product away. You want to make money. Now in some cases, you're actually taking in the right amount of money, but maybe the item isn't set up quite right in your inventory. So these reports might, might uh, identify this as being an upside down margin. Oh my gosh, it looks like I buy it for you know, $20 and I sell it for a dollar. Oh geez. Well, it may not be that way. It just may be it's set up incorrectly in the inventory or maybe through 
the magic of the electronic data interchange or EDI with your supplier. It's changed your minimum order quantity. It's changed your um, price or your your cost from um, individual product to to package size. These things can can help immediately turn your turn your uh, invoices upside down or turn your margins upside down. So it's very important to find this out early, so that because all that information that gets put into Paladin over time, um, you can't go back and change an invoice, but you can go in and correct an inventory item so that the future invoices will be set. So the quicker you catch it, the less upside down your, your inventory is going to look. So if you, in fact, resonate with that, and if you're running your inventory um, valuation report, and you see that you've got a lot of margins that are just really you know, slim, or in the negative, more than likely, it's not because you're losing money. More than likely, it's because something has gone haywire in the inventory. So it's important to track that. Now, this is true in, in every system. Uh, you know, it's, it's just numbers. Numbers don't lie. And if the numbers don't match up, it can create havoc. So you want to catch that sooner than later. Now, mark your calendars because coming in November, which is on the 10th of November, we're going to have a webinar on our new Paladin Insight. Paladin Insight is a powerful, powerful interactive tool that gives you real-time data and real-time information. No more reports. This is real-time stuff. This just it enables you to look at the information. And um, if your dials look similar to these on the screen, <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's a lot of work we have to do because you want to get these dials more into the green. And uh, I will touch on this some today. The reports that we're doing today uh, were kind of the predecessor to, to these dashboards or to the Paladin Insight. Uh, so, but you know, it's nice to know all the tools that you have in the system and, and, uh, and use them accordingly to be able to manage your inventory. All right. I am going to, at this point, um, I'm not ending the webinar, but I am going from this presentation, and I'm going to go into the Paladin product. Now, there's a couple of areas that I want to go to. Number one, I'm going to go into inventory, and I'm going to show you what you should be seeing today. If you go into inventory and you have not selected a part number, and you're on the latest release, and I think it's gone out to all of our uh, general releases, so this is something if you log in as a manager or an owner, you should see these dials. If you're looking at these dials and you say, what the heck is this? No worries. Uh, you don't have to do anything. It's just going to track your inventory. But on November 10th, you'll definitely want to be at the uh, webinar on these uh, Paladin Insight dashboard. Another uh, important thing, I would, I would tend, attend all of the webinars from today until November, November 10th because our series of part one of Unraveling the Mysteries of Inventory begins next Tuesday, part one, the following Tuesday, part two, the following Tuesday, part three. And uh, after that, I think there's another one. But then we have on November 10th the um, Paladin Insight uh, review. So it's going to be real powerful, and it's, it's an incredible tool that a lot of people have been asking for tools like this for uh, a while. And, finally figured out the uh, easiest, uh, least intrusive way to uh, accommodate, accommodate these needs. So let's go into uh, and look at, and I'm going to just refer to my um, presentation over on the other screen for a moment. Uh, the first report that I want to show you is negative stock on hand. So we just go into reports, we go into inventory, and the general tab under there says negative stock on hand list. So we can run this negative stock on hand list by part number range, department range, supplier class, subclass, and locational range. In this case, I'm just going to select uh, my largest supplier here, which in this case is, is ACE, but it could be you know, any number of, uh, of dozens of other suppliers that we uh, support, or it could even be on the, uh, you know, the Cardinal or McKesson side on, on the pharmacy side. So, there is an option for an additional setting to include items with zero stock on hand. Now, you may or may not wish to do this. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to select it. And then you can sort by 
uh, location or no sorting. I think it just sorts by the part number. And you run the report. And this is going to tell you, it's going to bring up a PDF report. Happened to bring it up on my other terminal, so I'm going to bring that to this terminal and show you that hopefully you can all see this negative stock on hand report. Now it shows you the line item number, the part number, the description, location, price, and uh, margin. And then off to let's see on how stock on hand right here. So this SOH stock on hand shows you how many you have on, on hand. And you can look at this. Uh, and you can tell very quickly what is missing in your inventory. All right. So, should there be negative stock on hands? Sure. Like I mentioned, on dump skews, on maybe fasteners, on some of the items that you're not really tracking, like coupons and and uh, things of that nature. Sure, they could be selling into the negative. And on the pharmacy side, RX could be selling into the negative because you're not really receiving product into your inventory, so it's going to show a negative stock on hand. That's all right. However, there is a way to circumvent this, okay? And the way to circumvent this, meaning if you don't want it to show up on the negative stock on hand report, I would just go into inventory, pick an item, and, uh, you know, on, on one of your, you know, fasteners or um, coupons or any of those things. You can hit uh, this little uh, box here, checkbox, non-inventory item. Change that, set the stock on hand to zero, and you're gold. It will never go below zero. And uh, that's a good thing because it's going to keep it and clean up your report. So your report's going to get smaller and smaller as you go through and you fix those items. So that's one way to straighten up that report. Okay, what's the next one? Next one is inventory count list, my favorite. So it says inventory count list. Now, you may or may not have generated this report in the past. It is uh, it's not really descriptive about what it does, um, but it's got some really good information. So I'm going to, again, limit it to a particular supplier, and I'm going to run my report. There's no additional settings or sorting options. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through and write my report to an Excel spreadsheet. So when you select to go to Excel, you need to be on a terminal that has the Excel license on it. Otherwise, it's going to just say, oops, sorry, Excel isn't on your machine. So, you know, try again. So that's going to be important. And uh, it's going ahead and grabbing all that information. And hey, lo and behold, it's right here. So this is the inventory count list, just chock full of a lot of information, and there happens to be on this spreadsheet 17,292 items. Now, where do you want to look here? Well, there's a number of different places you can look, and you can get rid of the, the columns that are in your way that you don't want. Just say, you know, hey, I'm going to delete that. I don't need it. And you can delete you know, other things you don't need, but it's chock full of good information. Price is one of them. Margin, another one. Uh, and then over here we have year-to-date sold and in the last six weeks sold. So this is the report I was saying you can look at your top 10 list, you can look at your top 100, and you can look at the last six weeks or the last year-to-date and just do a sort. Just do sort, uh, largest to smallest, yep, include all the rows and columns, and there it is. Boom, there's lots of big numbers here of items that sold. A lot of those are keys and bird seed and, and rope and other things. All right, so what else do you want to look on this particular report? Well, one of the things that's really obvious to me is the margin. Let's go ahead and sort the margin by the smallest to the largest. This is going to show us everything that's upside down. Now, some of these are legitimate. Most of these are legitimate. They're, um, you know, uh, some of the, the uh, ace paint giveaway items. Yeah, you're, you're not making money through Paladin. You're getting reimbursed from your manufacturer or wholesaler. But in some of these are end of life. Uh, there's several of them. But this gives you a real good idea on how you're tracking when it comes to, you know, is my, are my inventory items set up right or are they not set up right? Are these legitimate margin losses or are these not legitimate? So those are uh, some of the things that you can do there. All right. Cool report. I love it. It's one of my favorites. All right, let's go to the next one, which is slow movers report. Now, this one I imagine most of you have run. 
It is under uh, performance analysis, slow movers report. We're going to go ahead and select that. And now we can select a particular supplier. And we can look at counted between certain days or years. In this case, it spans over a two-year period. And we can look at the weeks of sales history to review. So how many weeks do you want to go back? And then report items with less than how many sales. So if you say, I want to look at the last year with zero sales, that's going to be, man, that's everything, right? Because anything that hasn't sold in the last year, you can see on this report just by setting the weeks of sale history to 52 and setting the report items to zero. And that will give you a list of all those items. Not only can you generate this and put this on uh, an X or a um, PDF, but also an Excel spreadsheet. So uh, also you can report only out of stock items and make that an option as well. All right, so that's a cool report as well. That's going to be important. Next one is shrinkage report. So you'll want to see your shrinkage. It's right here under slow movers. And that on that report, same parameters, same criteria. You set it up by a department or supplier or class range. And you can look at shrinkage for all amounts or greater than or less than a certain dollar amount. And you could also include deleted items in the shrinkage report or not. It's up to you. And then you have some sorting options down here, shrinkage cost, quantity, or even part number. Shrinkage report is good because it's going to show you everything that has, uh, you know, that you basically have uh, counted, and there were less than what you thought there were on the shelf. Now, if you're a new store, and you kind of, uh, you know, initially you didn't quite know how to receive product. I've seen this done a number of times where they use the count field in the inventory, right here, to receive product. Not the correct way to receive product. No, no, no. Uh, uh. Right next to it, there's a receive button. If you want to manually receive it, you can receive it through the F5 receive button, but please don't use count. It's not what it's intended for. And if your counts are all messed up because of that or any other reason, we can reset those to zero across the board and you can start fresh. All right, so uh, contact your technical support rep and, and they can help you through that process. Last report is inventory valuation report. Now that report is, uh, again, it's one of those that's quick, it's easy, it's painless, and I'm just going to run it for every item in my store, all 41,000 some odd uh, items. And then it brings up a PDF report I brought on my other terminal here, so let me bring it over here. And it breaks out everything by department. It gives you the number of items you have in that department, the stock value, retail value, year-to-date sales, year-to-date profit. Here's where the big numbers are, your margin on sales and your gross margin return on investment, right? And then it gives you the aggregate or the effective margin and effective gross margin return on investment at the very bottom where it totals everything. Oh, and this only has 21,000 items because I restricted it to, uh, to just the ACE supplier. Uh, we've got stock value of uh, 419,000, but a retail value well over a million. And in year-to-date sales, 1.6, year-to-date profit, you know, half a million or better and our margin and department uh, gross margin return on investment. Very nice uh, report, very easy, very simple to generate. And this report, as well as your accounting report, your outstanding balances, uh, you should probably just, uh, fair warning here, set it up as a run automatically report. So at the bottom here we have our, uh, our uh, reports that we can uh, create and uh, you can also set these up on a timer so you can have them just automatically run at the end of the month. You'll want to do that with that inventory valuation report because that's a snapshot in time. Now you can get it back by loading a backup and doing it that way, but uh, my recommendation would be set it up so it runs automatically. Thank you guys. That's uh, 30 minutes uh, right to the uh, number there. Charles, I'm going to make you uh, not a man of your word and push you just a second with an extra question here, if that's all right. Oh, it's totally fine. <laughs> okay, cool. So we've got a report. Do, do the reports show deleted items, the ones that you're showing for the slow movers report? Are the deleted ones going to come up on there? I believe so. Let's go back and look at that. On the slow movers, so there is a spot here that says report only out of stock, report items with sales. Uh, good question. On the slow movers, what's slow? It will not, according, I don't think it's going to show your deleted items. 
because deleted items are no longer part of your active inventory. So I don't know why you would necessarily want to see those in the slow movers report, but I'm about 98% sure that it doesn't include deleted items. But I could be wrong. Anybody else uh, run this report frequently and they do they know that? Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and re run it and let's see if there's a flag in there that says deleted or not. And it's 109 pages in late. I'm just going to send it to Excel. That way it's going to be easier and faster. So we'll see momentarily. Also, are there any if other you questions? Mind taking, yeah, if you wouldn't mind taking a couple seconds to show them how to create a saved report, which is kind of what you were talking about there. Uh, we've got a few people wanting that information. Sure. I'll show the saved report here. Um, there's actually another webinar that uh, the top 10 most overlooked features. It's a webinar. It goes over that in great detail, but I will show you very, very briefly here. It looks like there are some closeout items, some items canceled items in here. And uh, let's just go and I just, I'm curious. You got me thinking now. And let's see if this particular inventory item is in fact uh, deleted. No, it isn't. It's still an active item. So I would venture again, I'm still 98% sure that uh, the slow movers does not include the uh, deleted items. All right, so let's look at the reports. So when you go to reports, uh, you can, now in this case, there's a bunch of Marty uh, in here. Oh, I made the mistake of clicking the button. I have no idea what that report, oh, it's uh, inventory master report is what that one is. So let's see if I can go to report here. Let's generate the inventory valuation report. Now, it's not actually letting me create because I'm at my maximum of I'm at my maximum of reporting here. So I am stupid because I don't know how to delete these. <laughs> do you, Chad? I do not. It's no. interesting. So so normally the F9 says create a report. Now, if you're looking at your machine and, and your database and you haven't done this. It's here under F9, and what you'll do is you'll you'll um, click on create a, a report, and then it'll ask you you know you'll just walk through and tell it what report you want to create, and you'll save that report. Now at the same time you can actually tell it to fire off on a certain day, a certain um, week, or or the end of the month. I think those are the three options, and then lo and behold, at that time, date, whatever, when it when it um, kicks off. It will go ahead and store it in your database, and you'll be able to recall it by pressing F10 Recall Reports. Now, I believe in the Setup Company tab, and you'll need to know this because when you create the folder to save those recalled reports in, I think it's in here. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Here it is right here. It's under Reporting Options, or Report Options under the Setup Company tab. And in there, you can do schedule reports, network share, and you can put it right on to that particular uh, network shared file system. And you can also determine when you want those reports to fire off at what particular time. So it's, it's pretty straightforward and pretty simple to, to do. But again, if you, if you wanted to see more of this information, I'm going to go ahead and pull up something on this other monitor here, oh, file, let's go to Paladin point of sale slash webinars. So in here under Paladin point of sale slash webinars, you've got a number of um, webinars in here and this one too will be at the top of the list. We might start have, we might have to start uh, segregating this out into subject matter because we have so many right now it takes a while for the all the videos to load on this particular screen but back way back 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 when the 10 most overlooked features I think that was the first webinar I ever did yes it was so you click on that and one of those items is uh, where you can create these uh, reports to run and fire off at night all right any other questions no sir 
Well, thank you all. I really appreciate it. Again, next Tuesday, very important. Mark your calendar for that one, part one of Unraveling the Mysteries of Inventory Control. We'll get a lot more into suggested ordering, a lot more into setting the system up, and how you transition to inventory control from what you're doing today, which may be counting with a tablet or using the RF gun. want to get you away from that. Let's get you out of the back office. Let's get you selling more, making more money. Appreciate it, guys. Um, Thank you so much. I'm going to end the broadcast. And there is a quick survey. Please uh, fill that out before you uh, depart. Thanks, everybody.